Hey everyone, Nick here from Talking Cardboard, and in this video I'll be doing an overview and review of the board game Liberty or Death, The American Insurrection. On Liberty or Death, one to four players will be recreating and simulating the American Revolution with players either being on Rebel side, which includes the Patriot and French factions, or the um, Royalist side, which included Indians and uh, British factions. This game was published in 2016 by GMT Games and is the fifth installment in the coin series. And I'll touch base on what the coin, uh, coin game is shortly. Now, this game can be played solitaire. It does come with solitaire bot charts that allow you to take turns for the non-player fa non factions if you choose to play the game solitaire. You do always need to play this game with all four factions, however. And also, this game is going to take at least a few hours to get through. There are scenarios that have a shorter game length, but even the shortest game length scenario is still going to probably be a few hours, so keep that in mind. The objective of this game is to be the first faction to achieve its victory conditions. Now, with that said, the Patriots and French are on the same side, so to speak. Uh, each, each team, in a sense, is playing the game semi-cooperatively. You want to help each other out so that your side doesn't lose, per se, but you also still have your own personal objective that you're trying to um, achieve before your teammate does. And uh, with that said, I want to reiterate, this is the fifth installment in the coin series of games. And if you're not familiar with what a coin game is, coin stands for counterinsurgency. And it's essentially a game system or series of games that has been published by GMT now since 2012. What makes all these coin games similar is that they usually are focusing on a historical conflict that inv involved elements of counterinsurgency, such as the American Revolution. And also, there's a lot of area control involved in all these games. And mechanically, these games are utilizing the same system in that every round, you're flipping a card to determine the player order or the faction order for that round. And also, the other mechanics of, the game, of each game are very similar in terms of how you're moving units around the board or how you're taking control and adding units. And a lot of the actions are very similar in how they're resolved from one game to the next. But... Each of these games differ in that the historical themes are very different, um, and also there are elements that get added from one game to the next which make them slightly different, and I will be the first to say that in my experience of playing now several different coin games, they definitely are very different experiences. Some I definitely like more than others uh, because of the differences in the small differences that one game has from the next. With that said, they're on their 15th volume uh, of the coin series, so they continue to make these games. And if you really want to learn more about how these games operate, definitely check out our Teach and Play video on the Talking Cardboard YouTube channel, where John, Corey, myself, and Corey's brother Blake play through a few rounds of the game Cuba Libre, which was the second volume in the coin series. And we give a much more detailed turn-by-turn, a step-by-step explanation of how uh, the game works and why we're doing what we're doing. In this video, I'm going to give a high-level overview of how the game plays. So keep that in mind if you just want to learn more of how this game works. I also do have a lot of live play um, recordings of myself playing through this game solitaire on our YouTube channel. So just check out the live videos that are posted on the YouTube channel if you want to watch me struggle through playing this game um, with three different AI bots. So that was a lot of fun. Actually, two different AI bots. I think I put I, I played both the Patriot and French faction myself. But without further ado, um, let me first give an overview of how this game works, and then I'll wrap up with my um, objective review of the game and personal thoughts. Here I have a game of liberty or death that is about halfway through. Whenever you start a new game, the rules specify where pieces are supposed to go on the board depending on if you are playing the short, medium, or long scenario. The main area of the board represents the northeastern area of the United States during the time of the American Revolution. Along the edge of the board are areas for each faction to hold their pieces, and then also along the edge of the board is a track used for resources and victory conditions. In each area of the map, there is a graphic that denotes the name of the colony, as well as two different stats boxes. One used to illustrate which side currently has 
military control of that area and the other status box used to track whether that colony's populace is supporting or opposing British rule of the colonies. The control and support status of each colony is an important part of victory conditions for each faction, which I'll touch on more shortly. The only other important part of the game that's not included on the board itself is the deck of cards used to control the flow of the game, which I'll also talk about more in a second. Each faction in Liberty or Death has its own unique set of pieces used to represent the location of troops, forts, villages, and militia of the representative faction on the map. Having pieces of the faction you are playing present in an area is necessary in order to establish control and is also important for many of the unique commands each faction will resolve throughout the course of a game. The full of the game is managed by a deck of cards that determine the faction order for each turn. Additionally, these cards provide a powerful events that can be used to a faction's advantage. The deck also serves as a game timer, as after several turns, a winner quarter card will be drawn, which initiates a victory check for each faction. If no faction has reached their victory condition yet, play will continue until the next winner quarters card is drawn, or until the end of the game, at which point a final victory conditions check will occur. Even if a faction is listed first on the card being used for the current turn, the opportunity for a faction to actually take a turn is determined by the sequence of play chart. If the faction listed first on the card is in the ineligible box, that faction's turn is skipped and the next eligible faction will have the opportunity to take a turn. The first eligible faction will always have three options to choose from. Of those options, one of them is the event from the card. The second eligible faction will then have the opportunity to take the option immediately after the option chosen by the first eligible faction, or they can choose simply to pass. If a player taking their turn does not choose the event option, this means they will be resolving a command. Each player will have a faction sheet A chart listing all the command options the factions they are playing can resolve. The British, for example, can muster to add troops. Garrison to move troops to cities, march to move troops to adjacent areas, and battle to eliminate enemy pieces. So that was a very abbreviated overview of the rules for Liberty or Death. Again, if you want a better understanding of how a coin game works, please check out that Teach and Play Cuba Libre video we have on our Talking Cardboard channel or watch the live plays that are still up on the Talking Cardboard YouTube channel of me playing through a game of Liberty or Death. I uh, also didn't really touch on at all the solitaire rules of this game. I will just mention that Liberty or Death or all the coin games come with these flow charts that allow you to basically play every faction um, using this AI system, which is really awesome. And it's very elaborate and kind of confusing, but it does come with the box. And um, if you don't want to play this game that way, you are free to do so. So with that said, I want to try to keep this review as objective as possible. I'm going to start with the components, and I will say, objectively, the component quality of this game is top-notch. The board that you get is of a high quality, very thick. The cards used in the game are of a high quality. Uh, the wooden pieces that you're using for the troops and villages and forts are very well done. Some players maybe prefer plastic or miniatures, of course. That's more of a preference thing, but in terms of the quality of the wooden pieces that come with the game, I would say they're well done. And uh, the rule books are of a good quality. Um, the player aids are, I'd say, middling quality, but they do give you lots of them in the box. Every player can have their own player aid, which I think is very nice that, um, that they do that. And the box quality itself is very nice. There's no insert in the box, so that's something that, that worth mentioning. You probably would want to get a, um, your own counter tray of some sort um, for this game to help keep track of all the pieces. The thing that I would say, the component that stood out that was sub subpar in my opinion was the dice that are used for battle resolution. And I would say those the dice definitely are leave something to be desired in terms of their quality, but overall this game fits in line with all the other GMT published titles which are of a high quality. The only thing I will also mention is from an artwork standpoint, you get kind of a very historical feel with the artwork of the board. It's very well done. Um, the artwork of the box, the artwork on the cards, it's all well done, but it's also very historical in flavor. And that, of course, aligns to the theme of this game being a heavily historical themed game. So I do want to mention that. Next area I want to talk about is the rules for this game. 
So objectively speaking, I would say all the rules needed to be needed to play this game completely are included in the game in the rule book. However, I do want to point out that the game comes with two kind of rule books. One is the rules of play, which essentially is the rule book, but there's also then a playbook which gives you kind of a step-by-step -step tutorial of a game of this of liberty or death for the first turn or so the rules of liberty or death which i would say is very similar to all the other coin games and i would say for a lot of gmt games in general are rather sporadic and things are said in a manner that is much more sounds way more confusing than than in practice and i don't know why that is for these gmt games why something so simple is described in such a complicated manner in the rule books but i do want to mention that i think objectively the rule books could be written better but at the same time the rules i do feel are all present in the rule book i would say the only times i had to go to the board game geek form for liberty or death to ask rules questions it was due to rules regarding the solitaire flow charts so for sure if you're playing the game solitaire you might be um you might find yourself asking it scratching your head if you're doing something right um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's because the rules weren't there. It's just more how to interpret some of the rules because they're worded so oddly at times. But um, if you're playing just with other players, I do think the rules are all in the rule book. They just could probably be worded better and maybe organized better as well. Next, I want to touch on the luck factor of this game because I know a lot of board gamers out there are very concerned on how heavily luck is involved in a board game they're playing and in liberty or death i would say luck is at a minimum in terms of its impact on gameplay compared to other coin games maybe luck is a little more important in liberty or death because you are rolling dice for combat resolution and the results of a battle can have very important implications um, so you are rolling dice and that's probably the biggest luck factor of the game other than that i would say which is the same for most of the coin games specifically too the decisions you're making are you know you're going to be the reason for why you win or lose the game so luck is definitely not a huge factor that does mean it kind of would favor maybe more experienced players um, but at the end of the day would just want to throw out there that luck is not a huge factor in my opinion for liberty or death um, due to the fact that there's not a lot of random generation being done um, of course you're flipping a new card every time with the event card deck and sometimes you're going to have players complain that, that um, the luck didn't go their way with the card draws, but um, I do think there's enough mitigation and enough variability in the card drawing system of all the coin games that you can't really blame how cards are coming out as the reason you may, um, if you were to lose a game. Next, I want to touch on the theme of Liberty or Death, as this being a historical game, you can imagine theme is very important for the game to really come alive and like all the coin games and no different here with liberty or death the history really comes alive while you're playing this game uh, these cards that you're going through from this deck all have historical people places locate uh people places things that were important during the Revol American Revolution and are affecting gameplay when you're playing Liberty or Death. And I think that's very awesome. It's a great way to learn about the history itself, which is why I really am a fan of these coin games is because they're, they're great educational tools, in my opinion. Also, this playbook, um, in, in addition to providing a tutorial for the game, there's tons and tons of rich historical text at the back that explains more details of the various cards that you're drawing and you know what the additional details and significance of those events or people or places were during the american revolution so i think that's awesome that they do that gmt i think does that in a lot of their games so i think that's awesome and yeah i mean the 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 artwork too of the board i think really helps me you know Get, get immersed in the theme of the American Revolution, and I felt that was well done. So yeah, for me, I think theme is very strong in Liberty or Death, and I think the mechanics are very well aligned with the theme too. Um, one thing I didn't touch on is that the leaders are, you, you also are playing with the leaders during the American Revolution. Um, so for example, you can fight a battle with George Washington, and he provides you a bonus, and I think 
you know, that's just a lot of fun to win a battle with George Washington. And then you get this morale boost to all neighboring areas if you win a battle and that helps you get your victory conditions. So everything just really connected with me from a thematic standpoint when taking into account the historical aspects of this game with the mechanics uh, as you're playing the game. Next, I just want to touch on the complexity of this game. So uh, as you maybe picked up from my rules explanation, this isn't a simple dudes on a map game. You're not just taking your pieces in one area of the map and moving them into the next. Everything that you want to do requires a lot of prerequisites. And for younger hobby board gaming enthusiasts, that may be very daunting. So, and also even for those that are, you know, been playing hobby board games for years, but don't really like those kind of head scratching types of games, this type of game may not be for you for that reason. Um, so, this would definitely be a heavier weighted game, relatively speaking. In fact, I would say it is a heavy game. I would say, depending on who you're talking to, some may say this is a lighter war game. But for the general hobby board gaming audience, this is definitely a heavier weighted game. So keep that in mind. And that also, of course, corresponds to the play length of this game. I was playing the solitaire game for several hours. Um, and that was just one, that was just me playing by myself. So... Uh, this game takes a while to play, and I think that's because it is a little more complex in nature, relatively speaking again. So keep that in mind. This is definitely not a type of game that you probably are going to be introducing to someone who hasn't ever played a hobby board game before. So I would definitely try to stray, stray away from doing that. But, of course, if you're familiar with coin games, this is very similar to all the other coin games. Um, and if you've played heavier strategy types of games, then I think this is a game that you would be able to pick up on. Although, going back to the rule book that I was talking about, I learned this game best having gone to a board game convention and playing it with other people that have already played the game before. I actually started with, that was Falling Skies, which is another uh, coin game that I have. And the rule, I read the rule book, it was just not making clicking to me, then I played it at this convention, and then everything made a lot of sense. And after that, now coin games come to me much better than uh, if I was reading the rule book for the very first time. So again, com this game is complex, keep that in mind. Um, and for your first time, you may want to actually play it with an experienced player to make sure you get a positive first experience with the game. So now I just want to wrap up with my personal thoughts and turn and whether I felt it was a fun game. You know, what, what was the fun experience of this game? And I will f say first and foremost of the coin games I've played, which now this I've played, I think five, I've played this Liberty or Death, uh, All Bridges Burning, um, Fire in the Lake, which is Vietnam themed, uh, coin game. I played Falling Skies, which is a Rome era themed board uh, coin game, and then most, and then Cuba Libre, um, which again we have a video on our Talk Cardboard channel about that game, if you want to watch that. And Liberty or Death was is by far I would say the most fun for me of the coin games, and I think big part of that is because there's the battle aspects of Liberty or Death is much more significant and much more present, and then the other coin games, and I guess I kind of like being able to roll dice and attack things and I think that's part of the reason why I like the Liberty or Death the best out of those coin games and also the theme connects with me the most. I'm a big fan of American Revolutionary War history. Uh, I can't say no a lot about it. I've actually probably learned a lot about it just from this game but that theme connects with me as well. So both of those reasons are part of the reasons why I am think I'm a big fan of Liberty or Death. I definitely hope to play it again um, with human players Though, although I did appreciate the experience with the, the, the bots, it's just that I felt myself um, scratching my head a lot and trying to interpret the flow charts that are utilized for the bot system, although everything eventually started clicking with me as I resolved the same types of bot actions over and over again. So I do enjoy this game. Um, would want to play it again. It is very crunchy. Sometimes you feel like you're almost... You know, it can come across almost like a um, history project more than a fun activity at times when you're trying to grog through some of the actions that you're taking. But underneath that layer of crunchiness is that thematic, the thematic aspect, which I touched on already that I felt that really shines through in this game, um, really getting to kind of, you know, whether you're the royalists or the rebellion, you feel like you you are you know 
part of that of the American Revolution as the as the rebels. You're popping up militia that are you know of course you imagine these angry anti-British people all across the colonies that are trying to pr protect their homeland and then you're trying to you know raise an army and then the French come in and um, and then as the you know as the royalist forces you're trying to manage your Tories and trying to prevent you know support from uh, or opposition I should say of the co colonists from um, taking away your power within the Northeast of the modern day United States so theme really connected with me as well I would say one caution is it's a four-player game, but for sure the Indian faction and the French factions are not super significant, I feel, are impactful, I feel. I would want to play this game more to say that strongly, but from my experience playing it with the AI bots, that's kind of what I picked up on. The Indians were a nuisance for me as the Patriot, as I would say, well, the Rebel player, um, but we're never really knocking on my door so to speak and the french you know i was playing as with the french um i was but they were kind of an afterthought for the first several turns um because in the game there's a rule that prevents them from doing a lot of their more useful commands until they get to a certain point and i could imagine that being a little boring for them so i'd almost say this is maybe more of a two-player game or alternatively it's a four-player game and then Whoever's playing the Indian and or French factions could be maybe newer players to this type of game. So it could be a great opportunity to kind of get, introduce someone to a, the coin series of games or just a, strong, a harder to play hobby board game in general. Um, but other than that, I do appreciate Liberty or Death, um, the American Insurrection. Hope to get it to the table again soon. And with that said... I look forward to any comments. Would love to hear what you thought of the video itself or what you thought of Liberty or Death or the other coin games. Um, definitely want to hear what you guys think. And uh, also, if you have other suggestions for the future of content that you'd like to see on the Talking Cardboard channel, please or let us know in the comments as well. With that said, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe to Talking Cardboard if you have not done so already. And I hope to get to see you guys again in the future soon.